Hello, everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode. This is number 163 for April 19th, 2022. Uh, actually, it's not April the 19th, 2022, when I'm recording this. I'm actually recording it the day before, on April the 18th. The reason being is, tomorrow, the day that I would usually put this up, I usually put them up on Tuesdays, I have a very busy day planned and i have an appointment at 10 o'clock which i'll talk about in a few minutes and that means i'm not going to get around to uh producing this so i'm producing it one day in advance but let's just pretend it's tuesday april the 19th 2022 shall we okay so what have i got to show you do i have any projects i do not no i know surprise um i have not created really anything because I've been playing with the new toys, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But, well, one of the new toys is my AccuQuilt uh, die cutting system, which I've already talked about uh, before and showed you an unboxing and a uh, first try at it. Well, I got thinking um, that maybe I need to, to uh, play with this a little further. I want to check out a few things about it. One of the things about the AccuQuilt... Okay, sorry about that. I just got a phone call and it was for air duct cleaning services. Like, hang up. Okay, what was I talking about? Yes, the AccuQuilt. One of the things the AccuQuilt uh, says that it does is it makes, you know, it cuts very accurately your fabric. Okay, so I thought I would put it to a test. And I've done a whole demo video about this, so I'm not going to go into it in detail, but the link to that demo that I put up on Friday of last week, um, I, the link for it's in the show notes below. <laughs> okay, I'm having a little mental problem here this morning. Anyways, so let me switch my screen here for a second. Okay, so what I did essentially was create two blocks the same, uh, different fabrics, but uh, just because I was going through my stash. But I want to see if by hand cutting and then cutting the same pieces with the AccuQuilt, whether or not my final block would be different in size. In other words, I'm assuming that cutting with an AccuQuilt is going to give me a more exact finished block then when I hand cut, well, the one on the left hand side, the blue colored one, that one I hand cut the pieces for. The other one, the orange one on the right side, I used the AccuQuilt to cut the pieces. Well, guess what I found out? They're both the same. Now that tells me something. One, I'm a very good uh, hand uh, cutter of uh, fabric. Um. And the other thing which told me was, yeah, as long as you're really accurate in your hand quilting, um, the AccuQuilt doesn't do a, a significantly better job. Now, the AccuQuilt does do a significantly better job when it comes to the utilization of fabric scraps, when it comes to very fast cutting. And I talk about those things in the demo video that I made. But yeah, so it still doesn't explain to me, though, why um, my finished blocks, after I've sewn them, never come out to be exactly what they say in a pattern they should come out to be. That would say, then, that my quarter-inch seam allowance is not accurate. But I have measured it on my sewing machine. And I, when I measure it, it comes out as a quarter of an inch. So maybe it's my pressing technique. Um, I don't know. I have to play with those aspects a little bit more. But the one thing, it doesn't really, it bothers me from the standpoint of view that I want the elusive accurate quarter inch seam allowance. But if all of my pieces are coming out the same, they're all consistent, in being out maybe by an eighth of an inch or something like that, then it's not a problem. It just means that the final quilt will not finish at the dimensions that are in the pattern. But is that a big deal? Because, I mean, yeah, there's some wiggle room, isn't there, in all of this? 
So I will continue to experiment with that aspect of my sewing. But also in the meantime, I am planning to create uh, more videos demonstrating various aspects and things that I do with the AccuQuilt cutter. So stay tuned for those. And I'll always put the, the links to those in my show notes of the Idiot Quilter YouTube videos themselves. Okay, so that takes me to my other new toy. Uh, and that's the Quilt Path. Um, you've seen the video that Walter and I made on So Chatty uh, last week where we showed uh, unboxing it and putting it together. That only took us about four hours to do that. And there were some trials and tribulations, but we got it up. We've got it running. So now I have to learn the uh, program. And believe me, it does have a steep learning curve. And I'll show you what I have been able to accomplish. I have been able to accomplish edge-to-edge -edge quilting. Now, this is not a quilt that I have on here. This is just a, a piece of fabric that's been sandwiched with batting and backing fabric. I just want it to play around. You can see up here, I did some edge-to-edge -edge quilting. And then this one, now it's a little bit more difficult to see because of the design, but I'm just pulling it up here. But you see it's all this series of uh, rectangles and squares. And this is called a, pow a Power Pento, and it works really well now that I have figured out how to do it. But the whole problem with the quilt path is uh, it didn't come with any instructions or videos. Oh, it did come with some videos and some instructions, but they are for an older version. I have version 5. Now, before anybody jumps on the case here who owns this, and tells me all about QCT5, which is uh, a sister program to this one uh, and everything. I know about that. And I've been watching those videos on YouTube. And I've gone to a Facebook group as well that talks about all of this. But really, I'm having to piece together information from different sources to try to figure out how to do various things with this quote path. And this quote path is a very verbose uh, or verbose um, program. It does a lot of things that I never thought of before. So I will, t it'll take me some time to learn. And as I do, I'm going to produce uh, some videos showing what I have learned to date. And what I've learned to date right now is this. I can do a basic edge to edge design on a quilt. Now I haven't done it on a quilt yet and I'm holding off for that. And um, the reason being is Tomorrow, I this appointment I've already alluded to, I'm going down to Whirls and Swirls uh, and to see Tracy, to meet with Tracy, and she's going to give me some lessons about doing using the quilt path. And she's told me to bring into her one of my quilts, and we're going to throw it on one of her machines with a quilt path, and we're going to go to town on it. So I'm thinking I'm going to come away from that with a lot more knowledge than I have now. Now, I'm not going to know everything about the quilt path because it'll be impossible for Tracy to teach me everything about this program. As I said, it's extremely uh, robust in the things it can do. Um, she has been talking about or alluding to the idea that she wants to get somebody who is an expert on quilt path into her shop to, you know, run probably like a one day uh, class or something about that and I can tell you if she gets that together I'm going to be the first one to sign up for it for sure but anyways meanwhile I'm just going to carry on uh, learning things bit by bit and you know and eventually um, I will know at least enough to do some other fancier things on my quilts um, but for now I'm happy with the fact that I know at least how to get it to do an edge-to-edge -edge design. Okay, so that takes me to a, a mini demo. I'm going to call it a mini demo now when I embed them into the YouTube channel because uh, I've got a new separate section I call The Idiot Quilter Presents a Demonstration. You might think that's a to uh, stupid topic, but from the standpoint of view as a content maker, it allows me to create intros that'll work with everything. It's a time saver, okay? Call me lazy. But um, 
the one I'm going to do right now, the mini one, is how I set up my sewing area ergonomically so I have less pain. Because as you know from last week, I talked about my sewing chair that I bought. And since I got that sewing chair, I have had a lot less shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain when I'm sewing for long uh, stretches of time. Um, so there is something to the ergonomics of your sewing setup. Now, I sort of poo pod this idea of an ergonomic setup thinking, yeah, that's just people trying to sell, you know, their services in one form or another. But it's true. It does work. It really does work. So I did a little video explaining how I have done this. So what I wanted to talk about this week was how I ergonomically have set up my sewing area. And I want to talk specifically about my sewing chair and about how I have placed my foot pedal. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because lately I have been having a lot of problems after I've been sewing for quite a while with um, pain in my shoulder, my neck, and in my back. So much so that I'm just about bent over double, believe it or not, after I've spent a couple of hours or more at my sewing machine. Now, I know you should get up periodically and stretch and do things like that, but I'm really kind of bad at doing that. But I have tried to do that, and that does help a little bit. But nevertheless, I'm in pain after I've had a session. And, you know, strictly speaking, you shouldn't be in pain doing something you love to do. So, I thought maybe one of my problems might have been my chair. Now, back before I bought the chair you're seeing right now, I had a stool that lowered and raised as you need it, which was okay for quite a while. And that was when I was in my, what I called the sewing dungeon, before I redid my craft room into my sewing area. And I was having some pain then as well. So I decided to invest in this chair because it had a back to it. And I thought, and let me just go over here to it, and I thought, well, this would be much more uh, or much better for my back. And it was for a while, but I was still having some pain. So when I went to uh, the sewing retreat put on by Ultimate Sewing a few weeks ago, um, I saw this chair. And I'll just pull it into the shot. And you've seen this one before because I showed it on my YouTube channel. And this one is by Janome. I'm just trying to get it in the shot so you can see it. Um, it's an expensive chair. This was over $300. And it's one reason why I didn't run out and buy it uh, earlier. But I did sit in this chair because one of the ladies at the retreat had one and I tried it out and I found it very comfortable. So I thought I would take a chance. Now, this chair swivels, as you can see, and it, come, it can be raised or lowered as well. And I'll show you how far down it can be lowered and, and very easy to put it up. Now, I find that it is just at the right height for my sewing uh, table, the way I have it set up. So my arms, when I get in here, are, and let me just move this over a little bit. I uh, don't know if that's any better for you to see. But my arms are at 90 degrees, 90 degree angle, pretty much here. And that makes me keep my head up and my shoulders relaxed. And that really helps, okay? And from what I've read online, this is the proper positioning for when you're sewing to uh, alleviate back pain, neck pain, whatever. The back of this chair is low, but because of the way the chair is built, it fits right into my back very nicely so it gives me support there and the seat itself is cut shallow enough that and I have short legs that it doesn't cut into the back of my legs and make my feet go to sleep or my legs go to sleep so it so far it has been very comfortable it's nicely padded as well so easy on the rear end um, so I'm very pleased with this setup and I've had great results with it I'm suffering a lot less after a long session of sewing than I was before. And I think using this in combination with making a point of getting up and stretching after say half an hour, 45 minutes of sewing, uh, that 
alleviates a lot of the pain as well. But one other thing that I found that alleviates the pain, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my camera. And just let me do this. So here you can see how I have my foot pedal placed. And what I did was I raised it up. I had a box that was just the perfect height and I just put the foot pedal on top of that and that allows me, I'll try to show you here, to actually, as I sit in the chair, control the foot with my, or control the pedal with my whole foot. Before when it was lower sitting on the floor, I was had a tendency because of the height of the chair to use just my toe and that was creating strain in my leg and in my uh, thighs. So this works really well. Now to keep this from sliding around, I put, let me just see if I can lift this up and show you, probably doesn't show up, but there's a piece of, of uh, plastic that's sort of a shelf liner kind of thing that you can buy at your dollar store or whatever. And I glue gunned it to this box. I glued a piece on top and a piece on the bob and that keeps my pedal from sliding and it keeps the whole box mechanism from sliding on oops on the carpet as well so this is working out really well with me so the combination of the foot pedal and the chair itself um, and doing a little bit of stretching has really really helped greatly in keeping down uh, the aches and pains that I feel after I've been sewing for quite a while now I am sure you can find experts who will tell you how to ergonomically set up your sewing area and they may or may not agree with me but for my purposes this is really working out well. So I'm a believer now in ergonomics all right and the right setup for your sewing equipment to you know that this is a hobby it's supposed to be fun it's not supposed to bring you pain and it is working out very well for me right now. Okay, that takes me to the subscriber's quilt of the week. Not. I don't have any. I have nothing from anybody to show you. So that's kind of sad, isn't it? So, I'm putting out an appeal. If you've got something that you've created, and you're proud of, and you want to show it off, so don't be shy, send it to me. Send me one or two pictures of whatever it is that you have. It can be knitting, sewing, crocheting, um, quilting, garment making, artwork, paint pouring, art journaling, paper crafting, scrapbooking. I don't care. Anything that's creative. Send me a couple of pictures of it, one or two, and just a short blurb about it, like, you know, four or five sentences at the most. And I will feature you on here. Please. I'm begging you. And if you've sent me stuff before, that's okay. You can send me stuff again. Something different, but send me something again. And I will show it. Okay, what's next? Okay, YouTube of the week. So, I was watching something or listening to something. And I heard about this type of quilting. I'm maybe a little late to the game. Called Convergence Panel Quilting. Well, that intrigued my interest, so I went looking on YouTube, and there are tons of videos. And essentially, it's chopping up a panel into strips, and the arrangement of those strips to create a very arty-looking type of quilt. So, um, I found a few videos about this, and um, I've got one right here. Well, I've got actually a playlist to show you. If you've never heard about this type of quilting, check some of these videos out. So I'm going to talk about a little bit more about this now. This week's video clip comes from Laura Koya's channel called So Very Easy. And I'm sure you're very familiar with Laura and her productions. Her tutorials are always very, very clearly done, very detailed and easy to follow. Well, I just recently found out about a quilting technique called conversion, convergence quilting. And this is where you use a panel. And essentially, Laura shows you how to do this. And it looks very easy, but the end result's very effective. You take a panel, add some borders to it, 
uh, make it into a tube, cut it into strips, lay out the strips, put sashing in between them, and create this very beautiful and effective design. Uh, Laura shows you, as I've mentioned, how to do this. It looks like it's a fairly fast and easy way to create a quilt. So if you're looking for that last minute gift, this might be something you can try. And if you're like me, you may have several quilts in your stash. And some people are not quilts, but panels. And some people actually collect panels, but don't know what to do with them afterwards. Well, this is a method I think that would work very effectively. And I wanted to give this a try because I do have a couple of panels in my stash that I don't know what to do with. And I think this might be a way, yeah, to use them up. So check this out. You'll find the instructions very, very easy to follow. And yeah, I think the end result's very effective. Link is in the show notes below. So yeah, I'm definitely going to do one of those soon. It's on my project list, which is always growing. Okay, so that takes me to what's on my vision board. And if this is a pattern called Star Crossed. It's by Cozy Quilts Designs. And I love Cozy Quilt Design patterns because they are the best patterns I have ever followed. They are so clearly written. Um, I never find a mistake in them. And they're just great. And I saw this a tutorial for doing this quilt on Jordan Fabrics. Um, she does, Donna Jordan does a lot of the cozy quilt designs on there, which is also very, very helpful. Um, and well, here's my review and my up close look at this pattern. This week's pattern from my vision board is called Star Crossed, and this is by Cozy Quilt Designs. And I really love Cozy Quilt Designs uh, because their patterns are so easy to follow and they're so very, very detailed and they are not full of any mistakes. So this one really caught my eye because I saw it on uh, Jordan Fabrics. Uh, Donna Jordan was creating this particular pattern. And um, yeah, I thought, well, I'll go and to CozyQuilts.com uh, and pick it up. Now, I could have bought it from Jordan Fabrics, but it would have been a physical copy and I would have had to pay for shipping and wait for it to come. If you go directly to Cozy Quilt Designs website, you can find their patterns on there and most of them are in PDF format. You have the choice between PDF and a physical copy. So I chose the PDF because I like instant gratification and uh, I now have it in my collection. In fact, I have set up a kit for this one because this uses two and a half inch strips. So a jelly roll will work very well with this particular pattern. And I had the perfect jelly roll or what I think will be the perfect jelly roll for this in my stash. So I have that set aside and I want to get started on it very soon. But it looks like a really neat quilt and when Donna Jordan put it together the secondary patterns that are in this that pop from it are very effective and I love the way they've done the corners on this as well so you might want to check out cozyquilts.com and check out all their patterns as well because as I've said I have found them very easy to follow and they have a lot of really great designs so that takes me to one of my own creations that I'm going to talk a little bit about and you want to know something I haven't got any quilts left to basically show you no I've shown you them all I've criticized them all um so I guess that means I got to get to work on more quilts but I do have pillow covers that I made and the ones I'm going to show you this week are basically my first attempt at making a pillow cover. This week, what I'd like to critique is not a quilt of mine, but are pillow covers that I have made. Now, I have to admit, I have not made one of these in quite some time. But when I first got into sewing, I had uh, leftover fabric, uh, scraps and things like that. And I thought, hey, how about a pillow cover for a couple of pillows that I had down in my rec room on my couches. So I made these two covers some time ago and they're both very, very colorful. And you can see they're just random strips of fabric uh, sewn together to make a pillow slip. Now this was basically my first attempt at making a pillow slip. And uh, I went onto YouTube and found a video about how to do this. And I did create an envelope fold. I think that's what they call it. Um, 
for the backing. So basically I can slip the pillow out, uh, the pillow form out and slip it back in, you know, for easy washing or for swapping them out. Um, I really do need to make some new ones because these are getting a bit tired looking uh, now, as you can see, they've been well used. Um, it's time to freshen up the look, I think. And a lot of people, when you watch uh, DIY home decorating kind of channels, uh, they do suggest if you want a quick way to spruce up your decor, uh, use pillows and, you know, swap out your pillow covers for these. Now, I made another one as well. And this is when I first got my embroidery machine. And there we go. The picture wasn't coming in very clearly. And I made this one. Now... I'm really intended to redo this one because, well, I'm not that fond of the design and I was experimenting with the um, embroidery technique for this one. Also, you can see that uh, the design here that I created uh, isn't quite, well, my points are a little bit cut off and that kind of thing. And I've just never got around to doing that. So that's a project I want to attempt again uh, soon. Uh, uh, the two little guys on the other side, maybe I'll talk about those in a future video because those were an in-the-hoop uh, embroidery design as well. Um, but back to my pillow slip. So the one thing I like about pillow slips is you can use up your stash. You can use up scraps. They're very quick, very easy to sew. They can be as elaborate as you want to make them. And uh, they're just a great way to uh, change the mood of a room. For example, I made uh, pillow slips for my cushions on my couch in my family room uh, that are Christmas themed. And I pull them out every year and use them as part of my Christmas decor. So really, making cushions is very, very easy. And in fact, I'll let you in on a little trick. I make my pillow slips big enough that I can put them over top of a pillow that may have a pillow slip already on it. Yes, makes it even easier for swapping out back and forth. So yeah, so that's my attempt at pillow slips. So this next little segment is about the Idiot Quilter Presents, and you'll be very happy to know that I actually have an interview this week to share with you. Yes, you don't have to listen to me rant on about something that you're probably not interested in. This is an interview I did with Sean Ironmonger. He is the guy behind the YouTube channel called The Guy Who Sews. We had a great uh, discussion. I always enjoy uh, interviewing another fellow male quilter. And yeah, the, uh, if you've never seen his YouTube channel, I've put a link to it in the show notes below. But here's my little uh, little excerpt from that interview. That's great that you actually won a prize. I would have been thrilled with third yes. prize too on one as, as well. So congratulations for that. Well, thank you. So uh, that takes me now, since we are both males and we know we are, well, we are a bit of a minority in the quilting community, um, but that's changing. There's more and yes. more guys, you know, that are, getting out there and, and getting into quilting but have you found yourself treated any differently at times because you're a male quilter not really i mean i've when you know if i go to the store with my wife you know they automatically assume it's her and that's perfectly normal and acceptable and um but you know when they find out it's me they often you know start asking me a million questions and um, you know, very, very accepting. The only issue I really run into that I find or anything that makes it different is a lot of times I have to go and ask for help because I think the shop staff or the vendor staff think I'm just a husband or a boyfriend just hanging out, waiting, you know, playing on my phone, waiting for my wife or girlfriend to, um, you know, finish their purchase. Yeah, I have experienced that as well. Now, yeah. I have another interview scheduled. Um, actually, I'm doing the interview itself later today, and that'll go up next week with a, a friend of mine who is on the uh, the Quilter's Way and a really interesting person uh, as well with a lot of experience in the world of sewing and quilting as well. So uh, that'll be coming up next week.
And as always, if you'd like to, me to interview you or you have suggestions for people I should interview, and remember, the kind of people that I'm interviewing are everyday people like most of us, okay? I'm not interested in interviewing the big names on YouTube out there, the gurus, because they've got a following already. I'm more interested into in interviewing people that may or may not have a YouTube channel. And if they do have a YouTube channel, um, you know, it's one that maybe I can help other people discover um, that didn't know about them out there. Because, you know, us little guys don't get a lot of advertising on YouTube because we're just kind of on the small side. So, yeah, and I, I will interview anybody who's a subscriber on here or beyond. Okay, so that takes me to um, the online fabric store for this week. And this is called My Sewing Room. And I believe they're out in Alberta. So many of the ones that I have reviewed, and not on purpose, but are located in Alberta. Alberta seems to be the quilting central of Canada. So here's my review of my sewing room. This week's online quilt store is called My Sewing Room, and they're located in Calgary, Alberta, and they do have both a website and they do have an on or a post brick and mortar store. So here's their front page. I have never ordered anything from them, so we're going to go with my first impressions as I always do. Looks like they're running a campaign for Ukraine relief. Every dollar counts. Uh, so that's good to know. And uh, let's just take a look at their front page. Well, it looks like they sell Bernina sewing machines. Um, and over on the left, uh, were you green with luck in March? Think pink viewer submissions. Looks like they have sort of a blog going on on the side. They have upcoming events shown there as well. Uh, they sell a sewing machine accessories. Uh, they sell quite a few different brands. Bernina, uh, Brother, Kimberbell, Handy Quilter, Candy Castle Products, Embroidery Online, which is OESD, one of my favorite sites for getting embroidery files. And then they're showing some recent products here. Um, some fabrics. Looks like they picked them thematically for the season. So these are all very appropriate Easter like fabrics um they have elastic they have pelon interfacing okay so that's everything on their front page so let's get into their shopping uh online store click that and let's see what they have to offer so oh they do have AccuQuilt. uh supplies good to know uh embroidery kits a quilt kit um different things in bernina collection okay so let's check out fabric fabric right here oh that's cute digging through our stash All right, let's see what they have in fabric. Huh. Okay, they have Picture Perfect Starter Embroidery Kit, Summer Sorbet Quilt Kit, Vibrant Spring Dots, Springtime Placemats. They have some that looks like uh, Charm Square Kits. Quite a few king size quilt backs 33.99 per meter looks like stuff's in meters that's good to know too um okay so i'm finding a lot of blenders here now they have it says showing one of 24 of 8158 of 8158 results oh my goodness do they have a way of subdividing that? Because I'm not going through that many pages after page, unless I've got a day. Okay. Kits, 
fabric by the meter and pre-cuts. All right. Oh, good. This does subdivide. Cotton, flannel, wool, linen, miscellaneous, other fabrics. Cuddle, a minky, laminate it, tool, organza. Okay, they sell all kinds of fabrics on here. So it looks like you might be able to get fabrics if you are a sewist as well, if you're a garment sewer. Let's check out their boutiques. And it's taking a moment for this. Which could be just my internet connection today. I've noticed it's been running a little slow. Okay, so we're seeing all these. We've seen this before. Okay, we've seen all of that before too. All right, I am confused. This just took me right back to that same page that has an endless supply of things. I clicked on boutiques and it's not showing me boutiques. Why is that? Okay, I'm not impressed by that because I am not going to spend all day going through their stash. Uh, let's click on cotton. I've got cotton and boutiques. So I have, you know, limited the filter here. Uh, no, I'm getting the same thing as I got before. Well, that is not very helpful at all. Okay, let's just randomly pick a page. And see what comes up. Okay, seventeen ninety nine seems to be the price of their, I don't know, twenty one ninety nine, twelve ninety. Oh, that's a panel. Another one. Okay, it looks like their prices range from seventeen ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine to twenty one ninety nine a meter. Not bad, average. But what's really bothering me is how they have them listed. I mean, I'm expecting over here to click on a certain type of fabric and I should see all the ones that fit that category. But what I'm getting is just everything. So what's the point of this over here? It's pointless. Um, let me try one more time. Let's pick, uh, let's see if I pick, Detailing. Let's take the batiks off. Let's take the cotton off. It looks like I got knocked out. Okay, I've got fabric. I want the batiks off. I want cotton off. And let's see what's coming up with tea towel. And guess what? Just as I suspected, same thing as before. So that is completely useless. Doesn't impress me. I am not going to spend all day going through their stash. Is there another way? They do have a search. So let's say I want North, Northcott fabrics only. Let's see what we get. Okay, I do get Northcott. Okay. But again, there's an awful lot here to check for. So let's say I want a particular type. I just got heavy metal. So let's see if this will narrow my search down a little bit more. No products found. Okay, let's go for something a little bit more popular. Let's go... Stonehenge. Nothing found. Okay. What if I do something like Tula Pink? No products found. Okay, I am not impressed by this. So the first thing that's turning me right off of this right now 
is the fact that I have to go through their entire stash to find what I want. And if I had lots of time, maybe that would be fun to do. But right now, that's not impressing me. So let's go back here to their online store and let's check out some of their other categories. Uh, what do we get if I go do fabric pre-cuts? Am I just going to get the same thing again? No, they actually show pre-cuts. Okay, well, that's something. Although I'm not seeing anything in their selection that's really exciting me here. Oops, sorry, I lost my sidebar here. A little slider. Uh, okay, they have pages and pages of it. So, yeah, again, I'd have to do a lot of searching. And not really into that. Okay, so what else do they have? Patterns. Let's check out their patterns. Ugh. What is this? These aren't patterns. Well, there are some patterns, but it's also giving me pre-cuts. Did I have something clicked on here I shouldn't? Let's just try again. Okay, let's get, maybe this is why, because I've got fabric pre-cuts here. Do not like their interface at all. Do not. Okay, so here we have patterns now. Okay, and they do have some clothing patterns as well and bag patterns and things like that. Okay, so here's the thing. They may have a lot of items to choose from, but finding them is not easy unless you are into sifting through pages and pages and pages of things. So not impressing me much. In fact, I am so unimpressed with this interface. Um, I really don't want to go any further with this. So just let's check one other thing. Let's take the patterns off. And it does this digging through our stash. So we go back to that. I think this is very poorly designed. I really do. Whoever put up their uh, web page. Okay, let's go to classes and events and services. Okay, what do we have? Aunt Annie's Mystery Quilt and Novel. Bernina Community Studio Software. They're definitely heavy on the Bernina. Okay, I am confused by all of this. Are these classes? Embroidered tea towel border. Well, let's click on one of these and, and see. These are all very heavy, heavily into the Bernina. Okay. Let's see. Bernina Creative Studio Embroidery in the hoop scissor holder. What's this tell us about this? It's $15. Embroidery month seven in the hoop scissor holder with Judy somebody. This in the hoop embroidery scissor case, perfect size to keep a pair of scissors, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so is this a class? It doesn't look like it. It looks more like it's a pattern or a kit. And it's not really telling me what this is. Okay, okay, they do have something here. Let's see, classes and lessons. Okay, class catalog. Here's that mystery quilt again. Join us as we launch a block in the month exclusive mystery quilt and mystery novel. On the first of each month, you will see the next section of the story, a block pattern instructions. And join us for a Zoom class the third Thursday of every month as we build the quilt blocks. Okay, so it's Zoom classes. Okay. So they've got a few things here that might be of interest. Oh, look, gnomes. Yes. <laughs> Pineapple gnome applique class. Okay, so 
that's a little bit more informative than what I clicked on before. Services, machine spot check, long arm quilting services, pattern printing. Pattern printing, interesting. What do they mean by that? I suspect that's for garment sewers. Submit your pattern to us and we can print it out on our large printer using only the layers or pages. Best way to use your digital patterns. Files must be in PDF format. Yeah, so that's what that is. So that's that's good. So essentially, the sewing room seems to um, cater to both quilters and sewists. Now, what about shipping? Okay, to have a customer rewards program. Uh, that's not really telling me anything about shipping. Can I find it? Maybe at the bottom of the page. Uh, no, nothing at the bottom of the page. They have retreats, it looks like. Okay, I'm not finding anything here about shipping. Let's go back to the home page. It's taking a while to load. nothing about shipping okay let's put something in our cart and see what we get uh we'll put some fabric in add to cart okay view cart do not like their interface i've said that now a couple of times okay there's an item that's in my cart Calculate shipping. Okay, let's go with that. In Canada, and I'm in Ontario, so let's check Ontario. Town or city. And update. Standard Canada Post. Okay. I still don't know how much this is. Subtotal. Okay, I bought one meter. Canada Post. Proceed to check out. Okay, let's see. You must be logged in to check out. I'm not logged in, so that means I have to sign up. Okay, I am not in pressed by any of this i am not setting up an account with them to check this out um i'm going to get rid of this item out of this basket yeah so let's see here let's just remove this for now And that should be gone. And let's go back to the home page. So, my overall impression, not favorable. I find it cumbersome to get around on their site. Their prices are average. Uh, I'm still not clear really on the shipping. I do not want to necessarily set up an account before I find that out. Um, yeah, and, and I find the site very cumbersome to get around. They might have a really great selection of fabrics, uh, but I don't want to spend the time going through page after page after page looking for fabrics. Their search engine doesn't seem to work very effectively, um, unless I'm just not doing it right, but it should be more intuitive uh, than what I was finding. You know, if you are a sewist, if you're a garment sewer, there may be some stuff here for you because it looked like they had a, a, a wide variety of fabric types uh, as well. And of course, if you're into a Bernina sewing machines, there's lots of stuff here for you as well. Overall, not a site I'm going to be coming back to, I'm sorry, but maybe for you, it, it'll be okay. And if you live in that area, where it's located, um, maybe the in-store experience is, is much more positive 
than what their online experience is. So that's my sewing room. So what's coming up? Well, guess what? Pop up Sew and Craft Day. This coming Saturday, April the 23rd, starting at about 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this is the same as a craft and chat, but as you know, craft and chat happens during the week, the first Wednesday of every month. And for those people who have a job, I kind of forget that people work for a living since I'm retired. Um, and I've had a few of them reach out to me and say they'd really love to come to a craft and chat, but of course they can't because work gets in the way. So I am offering every now and then one of these days on a Saturday. I call it a pop-up because I'm never absolutely sure when I am going to be able to do it. I haven't done one in a while, so I thought, yeah, this next weekend coming up, the lull after, you know, the big wind-up to Easter uh, weekend, um, might be a good time to do it. So that's what I'm planning. The Zoom link for it is in the show notes below. I will do a reminder little short video uh, on my on here on my channel on Friday uh, just to remind you or for some people who may not have seen the other videos didn't get around to watching me I don't know why it should be a priority in your life shouldn't it um uh, <laughs> yeah right um so I'll, I will remind you then as well and if you're not familiar with the concept of pop-up craft and so day it's easy you just come whenever you want to uh, as I said, it'll start at approximately 8 a.m. in the morning on that Saturday, Eastern Standard Time. It may start earlier than that. I may be, once I get up and get my day going, I'll click on and have it active. Um, so, you know, if it's before 8, feel free to join in if you're if you're awake. Um, and it'll, it's just, you can work on whatever you want to work on. Um, a quilt, a garment, some knitting some other sewing, some crocheting, some craft work, some scrapbooking, some art journaling, whatever floats your boat, okay? It's just a time for you to enjoy something you enjoy working on. Now we have light conversation and whatnot. We don't get political. We don't get into anything too hot and heavy. And, uh, you know, we may share an idea or two or, you know, inspire each other whatever so that's this saturday april 23rd starting approximately 8 a.m eastern standard time and how long will it go for depends if i get bored it may be short uh, but generally speaking i try to run it until about maybe four o'clock in the afternoon okay and as i said you can come and go as you please whatever um so hope to see you there if you're able all right, and of course, I've already mentioned that I've got a day tomorrow with Tracy at Whirls and Swirls. Tracy is a wonderful person, and her customer service is second to none. Um, and if you've never checked out her YouTube channel, and if you're into long arm quilting, then it's a must. Whirls and Swirls. Be sure to look it up and go for it, um, because you will not be disappointed. Um, yeah. So I think that's all for me today. I hope you have a great week. I hope to see you maybe on Saturday. And uh, go out and make something that makes you happy. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.